Hello, I'm Carolyn and this video is part two on creating Pyramage projects in Inkscape by using objects to pattern. Now this one was a little bit difficult to show an example. Shown here is an example. You can see that the image twists. I know it looks ugly with these yellow stroke lines, but that's so you can see the twist on the design. Let's just move them aside. You can see as they get cut out, each one is actually slightly rotated. So on this video, I'm going to show how you can create a design like this one. Once again, I need an image and I'm just going to use the same photo I used in the previous video. So let's find it again. There it is. And I need to resize it. So I'm just going to lock the padlock and I'm going to change it to 150 millimeters. Now at the moment, this is still an image. I need to change it to a pattern before I continue. So I've got object, pattern, objects to pattern. I can see now I've got a rectangle and it's got a pattern fill. So this is no longer an image. It's actually a rectangle with a pattern fill. Now I need some nested shapes, which to save time I created previously. So let's just bring over this set of nested squares. I can see I've got six objects. I need to combine them. So I'll go path, combine. There must be the top object. And I think they're the bottom one. So to make sure, I'm just going to raise them to the top. And I'm going to place it on the pattern. Let's zoom in. I think just about there will do fine. Then I need to select both parts. Go path, division. Click on a blank part of the canvas, move the original pattern to the side. If you've watched the previous video, you know the largest square is going to be the top object and there will be two of them the same size. So I'll move one to the right. I'm just going to delete the next one. With the next size square, I'm going to raise it to the top, place it on the previous image and delete the duplicate. And we'll just continue through. So we'll raise the next one to the top, move it over, delete the duplicate. Raise the next one, move it over, delete. Raise it, move it, delete. Goodness, glad I didn't have any more than that. What I must do before I continue now is align these. So I'll just select them all, open alignment. Then I will align to the center horizontal to the center vertical. To make this easy to see what I'm doing, I'm going to add a stroke line. I'm just going to make it a little bit thicker. You don't have to do this when you're creating your project, but if you do have trouble seeing what you're doing and how the pieces are moving, just add a stroke line. But you must remember to delete the stroke line before you print. Now, if you watch the previous video, You'll think it's the same as before. This is where the change comes in. I better affect this last icon, which I already explained, relates to the pattern. Click on it so it's not selected. Now if I select a piece, the pattern will change. Look if I just move it to the left. You watch what happens when I release the mouse button. See the pattern change? It's the same as the image underneath it. And this is what we're going to take advantage of to add a twist to each of these pieces. Now the largest shape I'm going to use as the base so I don't want to change that. So I'll start on the next square. I'll click on the image again so I've got the rotate handles in the corner. Now I know there's many different ways you can rotate and there's many different angles you can use. What I'm going to do in this video is hold down the shift key and just rotate the image till it just touches the other stroke line. If you haven't used this method of rotate before, I'll just quickly explain it. If you hold down the shift key when rotating, instead of rotating from the middle, it actually pivots from the diagonally opposite corner. So let's look at the next one. I'll just click on it twice to get the rotation handles. You watch when I hold down the shift key and start rotating. 
you'll see the rotation point will actually move to this corner. So if you look at the lower left, it's really hard to see, but if you try it yourself, you'll actually see the rotation center is at the lower left. Once more, I'll just stop when it touches the previous stroke line. Click twice on the next shape. Hold down the shift key, rotate to the right, and I'll click twice on the next square. Hold down the shift key, rotate to the right, click twice on the final square, rotate to the right. Of course, if I was doing this project, I would zoom right in to make sure they are lined up perfectly. So now we have another project created. I need to move these pieces to print. Now if I move this, it's going to change. To stop that, I'll come back up to Effect, click on the last icon, I can now move that piece and it won't change. So I've just shown you one example of how these can be rotated. The possibilities are endless. What I would suggest you do is go ahead and experiment and see what results you can create. In case you wondered why I just didn't rotate these squares before I started, there was a reason and I'll just show you now. Here's a set of rotated shapes I created previously. I've deliberately overlapped them so we can exaggerate what's going to happen. I'll select them and I'll go path, combine, I'll raise it to the top. Now let's bring it over to the pattern place it where I want it to be, select both parts, go path, division, select the top pattern and move it aside and then let's start moving these parts. See here that three shapes have actually combined and this is now one piece. Look at this, it's a mess where pieces have intersected each other, it sliced them apart. So if you do want to create designs that have got a rotation on them, create the design, then start moving the parts. In a short video, it's not possible to show you lots of options. I've just shown the basics, it's now up to you to go ahead and experiment and see what you can create. So open Inkscape, select an image and start experimenting. Have fun.